All right, in this lesson, we'll cover the normal distribution. So what is the normal distribution? It's a symmetric bell-shaped distribution with a single peak. All right, in this distribution, the mean, the median, and the mole are all equal to one another. That makes the distribution symmetrical, okay? So let's add, talk about some more facts. All right, since this is a normal distribution, and remember, it's bell-shaped with a single peak, right? 50% of the data is to the, the left or below the mean. 50% of the data is to the right or above the mean. All right, data values in the tails or towards the tails are rare, all right, because norm normally all that data is within what they call three standard deviation, and that's this point here, okay, and we'll talk about that as we, in, in a few moments, when we draw an actual curve, all right, so now, this, this, we talked about this point, talked about 50% on above, 50% of the data above or below, but normal distribution never touches the horizontal axis, so you can call that X, okay? It gets close to, but it never uh, touches it. And like a college algebra course, we would call that an isomtope, okay? All right, so how do we draw a normal distribution, okay? So let's say we're talking about exam scores. Now, for normal distribution, you need two things, all right? You must have... But they are in the mean, and the notation for mean is x bar, and standard deviation. Now that could be a sample, but in most cases, notation, if you typically, they could use mu. So you use Greek letters for mean, sigma, and we're talking about population, okay? So this means we've got all the data um, to be population. The mean of the population and the population standard deviation. Okay, so there is a difference between the population standard deviation and mean and the mean of the sample and the sample standard deviation. But in this case, we're going to say that the mean, they tell us the 72, the standard deviation, remember that's a measure of spread, equals 8. And we want to draw the curve. So the first thing we do, we put the mean in the middle, 72. Now, the standard deviation simply tells us how far away each data tells us how far away data is from the mean. So to the right, we're going to do 72 plus 8, which is 80. 80 plus 8, which is 88. 88 plus 8, which is 96. And this will be... That's plus 1 standard deviation, plus 2... Standard deviations plus three standard deviations. All right. Data values to the left. We will subtract eight, which will give us 64. Subtract eight again, which will give us 56. Subtract eight again, which will give us 48. And these minus one standard deviation to the left minus two standard deviations minus three standard deviations okay 
So that's how you build a curve. You have to have the mean and the standard deviation to build that curve. So now how much data, this is what's called the empirical rule. So this will come up time and time again in statistics, okay? Now notice the notation, I kind of jumped ahead of myself. Use mu for mean, sigma for standard deviation, and we're talking about population. Okay, so now let me describe what's happening. Within one standard deviation, right, 68% of your data will fall if your data is normally distributed, will fall within one standard deviation. Okay. Within two standard deviations, you will have 95% of your data. And within three standard deviations, you have 99.7% of your data. So just remember, if you're going to apply the empirical rule, you want to highlight 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations. 95% of your data will fall within two standard deviations. And within one standard deviation, 68% of your data. All right, so let's apply the empirical rule to a situation. Suppose a standardized test that scores on a standardized test were normally distributed with mean, so we're going to say mu equals 510, sigma is 95. So what we'll do is we want to not only draw the curve, but we also want to apply the empirical rule. So the first thing that we do is we'll take our calculators and we're going to find the break points. So we'll do 510 plus 95. And one standard deviation to the right will be 605. Okay. Then we do 510 minus 95. That's 415. So that means 68% of the students or test takers who took this test scored between 415 and 605. Right. Now, the 95% mark or two standard deviations away. So we will go 415, we will subtract another 95. That's 320. We'll take 605. We would add 95, that would be 700, okay? Then we would take 320 and we would subtract 95, that's 225. Take the 700, add 95, that's 795, okay? So, if you were asked, between what scores with 95% of the test takers, what would what, what their score range be? Um, you would say in between 320 and 700. So now you can take that same empirical rule and you can draw the curve. So I'm gonna draw it on the next screen. Okay, our mean was 510. Then we had 605, 700, and 795. To the, to the left we have 4, 415, 320, and 
225. Right? Now, in statistics, it's always important to always draw the curve. And I'm going to say it over and over again. Always draw the curve first, and then you can, you can interpret. Okay? Because the empirical rule is easy once you have the curve. So if I if I drew the curve first, I would just I can use this graphic. And say okay, 68% of the data. I'm drawing the curve 415 to 605. 95% of the data is in between 320 and 700. And then the overwhelming majority of the data is in between 225 to 795. And that simply means now, you're not going to always get these, these clean endpoints. So let's say a score of 800, okay? And I'm jumping ahead, but that's fine. Let's say you scored 800. Let's say it's here. All right, that's, that's rare, okay? And if you'll score 200, that's rare because it's, you know, 99.7% of the data was in between 225 and 795. So getting an extremely low score outside the three standard deviations is rare. And getting a, a score above 795 or outside of, I guess, above three standard deviations is rare as well. So just take note with respect to that. All right, so next example. Now, I'm going to reverse it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the graph first, okay? And then we'll come back and fill in. So we know what mu is. It's 34. All right, standard deviation was, or sigma is 0 0.04. So, always draw your mean, place it in the center. We're going to do above a circumference of, of 34, I guess this is inches, so 34 plus 0 0.04, that's 34.04. The next one, that's 34.08. Do the next one, that's 34.12, okay? Do it, go to the, to the left, we would just subtract 0 0.04. 34 minus 0 0.04 is 33.96. And we'll go 33.92. And 33.88. Now notice in the application, now let's go back and let's answer this question. Okay. Now we have our table, so we can we can use our graph to answer the circumference, the the endpoints for circumference falling between for sixty eight percent of the the gears. Okay, so you just use your table. Uh, I think we were at with within one, and let's just do it on on this graph. So it's easier just to do it here. Endpoints, so see, sixty-eight percent of those gears. The circumference of those gears were in between thirty-three point nine six and thirty-four point zero four. Then you say, okay, well, what about ninety-five? Again, that's two standard deviations: thirty-three point nine two and thirty-four point zero zero eight. So we know that's ninety-five percent. And then if we want, want it 99.7%, we know that would be 33.88 inches and 34.12 inches. And then let's put the units. 